So here's the argument so people understand your argument. Uh, the comforter, the helper whom Jesus will send. That cannot be the Holy Spirit. That must be a prophet. And the only prophet that fits that profile is Muhammad. That's the objection you heard, right? Yes, and because the Holy Spirit was would have been already there. Okay, so good. Go to John 16, 7. Pay attention, because I'm glad you're bringing these up, because if you're sincere, it will be a matter of time. You're going to find the church and get baptized and belong to Jesus Christ and worship Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and condemn Muhammad as the son of the devil. So we'll see. Now go to John 16, 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send them to you. Right, so the comfort is not there. So that's obviously not the Holy Spirit. That's the argument, right? Yes. And that's the passage they use, right? John 16, 7. Nevertheless, it is convenient that I go, because if I don't go, the comfort won't come to you, right? Yes. But if I depart, I'll send them. Okay. So you believe Jesus sent Muhammad? Yeah. Silence, right? The same passage that your Muslim buddies are using to prove it's Muhammad proves Jesus sent Muhammad. I will send him to you. So Jesus is Muhammad's God. Now go to John 15, 26. But when the helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. So who sends the comforter, the spirit of truth? Jesus. Who sent Muhammad, according to Muslims? Uh, Allah. So then Jesus is Allah, Muhammad's God. So aren't you worshiping Jesus? Because he's the one who sent Muhammad. And where does the comforter come from? Oh, from the Father. Does Jesus. the Quran say Allah is the Father? No, Allah is not a Father. Okay, so now either you're going to tell me the Muslims change the Quran, change the message of Muhammad, because Muhammad knows the Father and the Son, Jesus, sent him, and he would never deny that his God, Allah, is the Father and the Son. So how dare you perverts pervert the Quran and change the message to deny that Allah is the Father and Son, because Muhammad, who's the comforter, knows that his God is the Father and Son, and he worships Jesus as Allah. How dare you change the Quran after he died? Go to John 14, verses 16 and 17. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. So you, you dropped your tone when you read it. So wait, you know him because why? He dwells with you? For he dwells with you. So Muhammad was there, huh? So you believe Muhammad pre-existed? No. But hold on, this is Muhammad. And Jesus said, you, Peter, James, and John already know Muhammad. He's with you. And then Muhammad will be in you. So how do you fit Muhammad in them? How did he enter? Did they swallow him? You sure you want to continue okay. this path of stupidity? I'm not saying you, the Muslim stupidity. Okay, I see what you're saying there. I, you sure you're saying what I'm saying? So who more. is it then? If I he's definitely... there, if he's already there and will be in you, is that a physical human being or is that a spiritual entity who can indwell physical bodies and empower human beings? Okay, can I ask another thing? Because it's I, I, I don't because he's saying he'll send this comforter. Sure. But then it's he also says it it's it's there and it will dwell of course. with him. Like sure. I, I don't because if you read John in context and not take verses out of context, it says at the baptism the Holy Spirit came down upon Jesus and remained with him. And that's why Jesus says he's with you because he's with me working through me. When I leave, he will then be in you working through you like he's working through me. That's what he means. He's with you, but will be in you. So when I go, I'll send him to now indwell you. Go to John 1, 32 to 33. And John bore witness saying, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove and he remained upon him. I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, Upon whom you see the spirit descending and remaining on him. And doing what? Is Descend. Hold on, before you move on, you're, don't read too fast. You got to learn, see what you're reading. Descend and what? Remaining on him? Yes, remaining on him. Okay. When you see the spirit come down in the shape of a dove, a visible shape. So you know this is the spirit coming down. Remaining on him. Now continue. This is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. Keep going. 33. And I have seen and testified that his that this is the Son of God. So you read 32, 33, it looked like you skipped something. And John, and John bore witness saying, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove and he remained upon him. I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, upon whom you see the spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. Beautiful. So and I have seen, and then you're yeah. going to 34. You don't need to go to 35. I know you like to give me more verses, but stay. The Holy Spirit will come down and remain on him. And you saw what John the Baptist said, right? He said, he is the one, the one you see the Spirit come down on. He, that one, Jesus, will then baptize you in the Holy Spirit, right? Yes. Okay. Now go to John 7, 38 to 39. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. 
But this he spoke concerning the Holy Spirit, whom, whom those believing in him would receive, for the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Did you not understand why Jesus says, I must go for him to come? Because until I'm glorified, you will not be given the Spirit, because the Spirit is with me. Yes, I do. Now, it makes sense now in the context of John, right? It does. And then you see why Jesus sends him? Because what did John the Baptist say? He is the one who baptizes in the Holy Spirit. So who's going to send you the Spirit and give you the Spirit? Jesus. So now it all makes sense because now think about it. The Spirit is with me, so you know him because he's with you because he's working through me and you see the miracles that I'm doing in union with him. And then he'll be in you because when I'm glorified, I will send him to indwell you. So where's the problem? Oh, well, there isn't one. I see it. But there's a problem if you believe it's Muhammad because now you're going to have to admit Jesus is Muhammad's God because he's the one who yeah. said Muhammad, right? But before you go on, I'm going to give you another example. Go to John 16, 14 and 15. He will glorify me for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. So one of the works of the Holy Spirit is to convince you, you, the agnostic and me, that everything the Father owns belongs to Jesus. And once you believe that, then he'll draw you to believe in Jesus. So, do Muslims believe that everything that Allah owns belongs to Jesus? No. But Jesus says, everything that belongs to the Father is mine. I own everything that the Father owns. Now, my question to you, whether you believe in God or not, just for the argument's sake, according to the Bible, the Father is God, and as God, does he own heaven and earth? Um, yes, I would say so. Yes. Well, I mean, from the biblical perspective, and the Muslim thinking the Father is Allah, okay. Does he own Muhammad? Yes. Does he own Muhammad's life? Yes. Does Jesus own everything that the Father owns? According to this, yes. So you just admit Jesus owns Muhammad and has damned that bastard to hell for rejecting Jesus as his God. And you sure you want to use this to prove that Muhammad is the comforter? Mari ikut Yesus. Mari ke jalan yang benar. Tuhan berkati.